Mystery Stairs. This is at psychicfocus.blogspot.com. So who was that a reading by? Must be uh, this lady. The uh, I guess it is this lady. Psychic Focus Lynn. Certified life and wellness coach. 3K master. Intuitive and medium. Yeah, looks like that's that's one of her readings. Well, that was a Reddit post that feels legitimate to me. Can you tell me if this is true? And if so, how it is possible? Well, that's the question she's answering. And then there are other questions. Well, that was a Reddit post that feels legitimate to me. My buddy has been an SAR officer for about seven years. He started when he was a junior in college, when he first encountered stairs in the woods. His trainer told him almost the same thing mine did, which was never to go near them or touch them, or even climb them. For the first year, he did just that, but apparently his curiosity got the better of him. And on one call, he broke away from the line and went to go check a set of them out. He said they were about 10 miles from the path where a teenage girl had vanished, and the dogs were following a scent. He was on his own lagging behind the main group when he saw a set of stairs off to his left. They looked like they were from a new house because the carpeting was pristine and white. He said that as he got closer, he didn't feel any different or hear any weird noises. He was expecting something to happen, like bleeding from the ears or collapsing completely but he got right up next to them, and he didn't feel anything. The only thing he said that was odd was that there was absolutely no debris on the steps, no dirt, no leaves, not even a speck of dust. And there did not appear to be any signs of animal or insect activity in the immediate area, which he found strange. It was less like things were avoiding them, and more like they just happened to be in a relatively barren part of the forest. He touched the stairs, and didn't feel anything except that sort of sticky feeling you get from a new carpet. Making sure his radio was on, he slowly climbed the stairs. He said it was terrifying, because of the way they had been stigmatized. He wasn't really sure what was going to happen to him. He joked that half of him expected to be teleported to some other dimension, and the other half was watching for a UFO to come swooping down. But he got to the top with, the, with little event, and he stood there looking around. But, he said, the longer he stood on the top step, the more he felt like he was doing something very, very wrong. He described it as the feeling you'd get if you were on a part of a government building in which you had no business, as if someone was go going to come and arrest you or shoot you in the back of the head at any second. He tried to brush it off, but the feeling got stronger and stronger. And that's when he realized he couldn't hear anything anymore. The sounds of the forest were gone. He couldn't hear his own breathing. It was like some kind of weird, awful tinnitus, or some people say tinnitus, but more oppressive. He climbed back down and rejoined the search, and he made no mention of what he had done. But he said the weirdest part came after. His trainer was waiting back at the welcome center, after the search ended for the day. And he cornered my buddy before he could leave. He said his trainer had this look of intense anger and was asked what was wrong. And he asked him what was wrong. You went up him, didn't you? My buddy said it wasn't phrased as a question. He asked how his trainer knew. The trainer just shook his head. Because we didn't find her, the dogs lost her scent. My buddy asked what that had to do with anything. 
The trainer asked how long he'd been on the stairs. My buddy said no more than a minute. The trainer gave him this really awful, almost dead-eyed look and told him that if he ever went up another set of stairs again, he would be fired on the spot. The trainer walked away. And I guess he's never answered any of the questions my buddy has asked him about it since. This looks like there's a Q&A here. Back to the original question. Is this real? And if so, how is it possible? As I tune into this, says the answer, I envision walking through the forest. I see the stairs in the distance. I feel drawn to them. My rational mind is saying, stay away. But something inside of me takes over and leads me to them. As I approach, the hairs on my arms stand up, but not from fear. There is some kind of energy shift, and I want to use the word magnetic, and I'm reacting to it physically. My ears are ringing, and I have to squint my eyes because everything looks so bright. I walk up the steps and just stand there for a moment, trying to take it in and make sense of what feels so illogical. While standing within this energy shift, my emotions feel paralyzed. I'm not scared or nervous or happy or sad or excited. I just feel numb. But physically, I feel something going on that is just off. I then refocus and sit on the forest floor outside of the energy bubble. I get this location is a source of many alien abductions. ETs use these stairs as a gateway between layers of earth like a portal. It looks like humans are taken, experiments are done, and then the human is returned to the forest using the stairs as a point of exit and entry. I see the search and rescue finding people that are highly confused due to the memory wipe that occurs through this process. As I sit there, I see this huge flash of white light. It looks like before the portal opens, a bright light shines at the top of the stairs. Search and rescue people know that, and they know to stay away when they see the light. Once the light is gone, they know that a lost person will be in need of assistance, and they will head to the area where the light was seen. Question, who is doing the abducting? Answer, I see these ETs that are tall and white. They stand on two legs and have two arms, but they're stretched out. And I want to say like Gumby. They look very tall, like seven to eight feet. What do they want? They look like a lower level ET that's trying to learn and advance. It's coming to me that they are intrigued with the division of conscious and subconscious mind that humans have. They have only one mind, only one mode of thinking. This limits them. And also they lack the ability to experience or understand emotion. They are trying to learn the importance of emotion to determine if emotion leads to weakness or strength. They feel that if they gain an understanding if they gain this understanding, it will help them, even if it means they need to use a component of human DNA to evolve to the next level. And that is all I have for this reading. Thank you, love and light, it says at the last.